Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Squeaky Sneakers. My name is Clara Zubrick, and today's episode we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the flatfishes we have around Weeks Bay. Flatfishes are really cool, um, really neat fishes. As you can see, they're called flatfishes for a reason. They are laterally compressed, so that means along their sides. So imagine if someone squeezed me really tight like this and I just smushed in, that's what laterally uh, compressed means. So they're compressed along their sides. And this is a neat adaptation that they have um, because it allows them to sit on the bottom of the surface, or the, the bottom surface of the waters, um, and they can kind of burrow into some of that soft, sandy sediment. Um, and this is an advantage for them um, because they're ambush predators um, so they can burrow down deep into that soft sediment and they can sneak up and snap at any fish swimming by or shrimp um, adult flounder like to eat things like uh, shrimp or croaker um, menhaden um, and so having that ability to lay flat on the floor and kind of camouflage themselves helps them um, eat and another method of camouflage, aside from just being flat, they actually have something called chromatophores. And chromatophores are cells on the surface of the fish, and it allows them to change colors, and it can even change, they can even change um, kind of like the pattern on their skin to match the sediment. So not only are they laying flush with the surface, that set bottom surface, and they can blend in with it, sort of like uh, an octopus changes color. Um, that's another animal we know that uses camouflage in that way. And so this right here that I'm holding is one of the more common flatfishes we have around here. Um, and this is a southern flounder. And you can see that when I hold this guy up compared to this other type of flatfish, this is a type of sole, they face opposite directions. And that is a really neat observation to make about these fish. Um, because imagine as this fish lies along the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of the bay, he might run into problems if he had both of his eyes or one eye on this side and one eye on this side. And so another neat adaptation these fish have to their uh, benthic bottom dwelling lifestyle is the ability to migrate their eyes from one side to the other. So a flounder isn't uh, hatched with eyes on the same side, but at about 30 to 60 days after hatching, they go through a type of metamorphosis. And so what that involves is a change in skeletal structure, change in, muscle, uh, change in muscles and their nervous system. And the eye on a southern flounder from the right side, this what becomes the underside of the fish, migrates all around his face and will end up on the left side of the fish or that upper surface as he burrows into the bottom of the water. And so, like I said, with the southern flounders, their right eye moves to the left side, but with some of our other flounders, it's the opposite. Their left eye will move and migrate over on to the right side. And so they face opposite directions. And so for that reason, flounders are considered left-sided. And other fish like the soles, we have a hog choker here that has really pretty spots and, and uh, lines for camouflage. These guys um, are considered right-sided. And so another type of neat little flatfish we have here that you might not find um, as commonly as the southern flounder is called a tonguefish. And he's called that for a reason. He's a little, a little bent out of shape here, but I'll try to show you. They're called tonguefish for just that reason. They kind of look like a tongue. So you can see we have a lot of diversity in the uh, kinds of flatfish we have, but they all kind of share things in common, like that ability for their eyes to migrate. They go through that transformation where their body shapes change, their eyes move, and um, it's all adaptations they have for surviving in their environment. So they're able to kind of dig down into the surface. They do this, like I said, they're ambush predators, so it helps them eat, it helps them hunt for their food, and it also is a method of protection from things that would want to chow down on them for a meal. So I hope you enjoyed talking a little bit about the flounder flatfishes we have around here in Weeks Bay, and we're gonna go catch up with Nancy Raya now, who's gonna take you through an art lesson with our flounders. 
Hi guys, welcome to Squeaky Sneakers, the virtual lessons at Weeks Bay. I'm Nancy Raya, and today we're going to discover some interesting things about the flounder, which I know that Angela is going to talk about it or Clara, but I'm here to show you how to draw the flounder. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, once again, I have my watercolor paper. I'm just going to take a dark crayon so I can see my lines. I'm looking at the flounder here and I'm going to reference that some, but I also have some specks that were drawn here by biologists that study the fish. So uh, first thing I'm going to do uh, is to go ahead and draw a nice big curve. Give me two. Let's just start out with a shape like this. Kind of looks like a lemon or a lime with, and I didn't close the ends just yet. Okay. Now I'm going to start out just because I can, I'm going to draw the tail out here. So over here, I'm going to try to draw this upside down so I know how you're seeing it. I'm going to do two dots far away, and it looks to me like the tail on a flounder comes out. So go ahead and give me two lines out like this. And then it looks like it's kind of not a straight line, little fringes. Let's kind of do a little shape like a woo 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 woo, like you're just making little wavy lines right here at the tail. When I'm going to the other end, let's go up here and see how that mouth, let me see how your mouth looks. Ooh, okay. So this guy has, let me see, and I'm trying to do this upside down for you guys. I should do it this way so that I'm looking at it the way you're looking at it. So we're over here, turn your paper around, okay? So when it, his mouth comes in, it looks like it's going down like this. He kind of looks like he's got a crown. And then it's going to come, go ahead and bring it back up, leave a little opening here, come back up and we'll go ahead and connect this. So it, it kind of looks like a down, not a smile, but the other direction. It has tiny little teeth in here. They get bigger toward the front. Give me some little tiny, like they're shaped like this. I'm doing shapes like this, like a little triangle coming up in here. Now, the most interesting thing, and I think you're going to hear the story how this happens, but I, if what's interesting, normally I would just, for most fish, I would draw an eye here, but I'm going to draw two eyes here, one eye here, and the other eye up here, close to the edge, just about when it's turned over. So we've got two, you can go ahead and draw another little shape in there. There's the two eyes. Don't forget, we have to have to put the gills in here. It's got a line here. You see, it's got, right here it's got a fin that's coming up like this. It kind of looks like a triangle too, maybe come down like that. Looks kind of shaped like that. Okay, let me see what other kind of markings. When I'm looking at the one, the way the artist that was drawing the flounder, where are you? Here we are, okay. And I do kind of see, if you look really closely, I kind of see a straight line that almost comes in the middle of the fish. So I would maybe go ahead and draw that back, okay? Now, the things that I've learned, and we know they've talked about them when they're preserved, they're not always the same color that you find it, but I know this guy is not on the top of the water, not in the middle, it's on the bottom. So it's gonna have markings and colorings that match the bottom water, the bottom floor of the bay or the ocean. So you just sit there just a minute. So, so far we've got this, oh, let's draw the fins too. Okay, so the fins, go like this. So they're just kind of, they start right maybe above the eye and they start out narrow and get a little bit bigger and then they get narrow again. So it's kind of like a crescent shape, I guess you could call it. I would probably do the same thing along the bottom. And now that I'm actually looking to him in person, if you want to, you could do tiny little zigzags, tiny little zigzags, because it's not a perfect smooth line. Kind of, so if you want to do like a little sawtooth a little bit here to show where the little ends of it are so I'm going to do that okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my coloring okay so right now we have a flounder looks like this two eyes that are different looking than other fish and you'll have to hear about that story from the biologist next thing I'm going to do is I'm thinking about would it be a bright purple if it was sitting on the ocean floor the bay floor would it be a hot pink or would it be, I'll give you a secret. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna wet inside the flounder only. Gonna get this watercolor paper activated. That's what us artists call it. This is the watercolor paper, 140 pound. 
and it's meant to hold the pigment. So the first thing I'm doing is getting it nice and wet all inside because I want to float some colors inside this flounder. This flounder to me, the way I've sometimes seen it, um, kind of has markings on it, almost like camouflage. When you think about camouflage, is it kind of a mix match of different colors? So I'm thinking the flounder might have, it might have some spots on here that are kind of the color of the sand. If you notice, wherever I'm dipping my water, you have to get your watercolors wet. Wherever I'm dropping it in, it's just kind of blending it in like a bleed, like you're making a tie-dye shirt. Just kind of letting it drop in. So I might have some spots like this. What other colors could it be? Do you think it could be a little bit of black maybe? So it could have maybe some of that. Okay, what are the colors? And if I didn't want my black real black, what could I do? Could I red it a whole lot? Okay, maybe it's not black spots. Maybe it's, maybe I'll switch to brown. You guys can look up the images of flounders. And if you notice what I'm noticing right here, some of these are a little too bright for me. A little too much pigment on my brush. So I'm going to give you an answer for that. See, I kind of like it when there's a lot of water there. Look, I'm going to add water. Let them blend in together. Ooh, I don't know. I must be hungry. It looks like caramel popcorn in a bowl to me. It looks like all different colored decorated caramel popcorn. Okay, so I'm just going to add different colors. If you want to, you can go ahead and if you want to make those eyes on this one, I don't know what they look like when they're alive, but these look like little black dots. So right now, I'm, this is kind of called like a camouflage or a mottled color. Um, that's where you're letting the colors blend in together because I don't want it to stand out as one color because you would see it on the floor. And if it's flipping that sand on top of itself to hide, we want it to Mother Nature wants it to blend in, right? So there's my fish. Here's the really fun part. I'm going to go ahead and get some clean water. I'm going to get a bigger brush. I'm going to wet, once again, I'm going to make sure the paints I'm going to use next are nice and wet. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the background and I'm going to just put some water in because I want to show where this fish is. Okay, and maybe, maybe because I'm adding so much water in the background, we probably could have put in a sand background, but maybe he's moving from one location to another. So we see him moving a cool, look at that. So what happened right there? Oh, that's okay. It kind of blends, doesn't it? Kind of blends when, the, when it looks like it is blending in with the background. So here's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and add in some water where it lives. So I'm going to put some blue like it's swimming through the water maybe to go find its next spot on the floor maybe it has some green in here okay so i want to add a bunch of dark colors and there's a reason in particular that i want this to have a dark pigment i want to add a lot of color see right now he's not matching his background but i kind of did that on purpose normally he does but i want to do another effect that i want to teach you today because I could have painted the whole thing just to look like him, couldn't I? I sure could have. But here's what I'm going to do. If you paint in some dark blues, dark greens to look like the water that he's floating in, swimming in, okay? The very last th step that I'm going to do, and let me move this so you can see. So an estuary is made up of what kind of water? It is where the rivers meet the sea. So that means fresh water and salt water. Oh, look at this. You ready, little fishy? So I'm going to sprinkle some live salt, well, not live salt, preserved salt, onto the background of the water. I'm doing it on, and the darker the pigment, the more color I put down, the more you can see this. So what's really neat is you can see the effect here. Here's another one that as I was finishing it, you can see when, you, when the salt dries, it pulls out some of the moisture and the pigment and it leaves. It looks like it's sitting in water bubbles. I think you'll like this effect. It lo definitely looks like it's breathing water bubbles right up through the water. Um, so you could add some other creatures in mind, like I did in mine. You could add some seaweed. Um, but this is your flounder lesson for today. And I can't wait for you to learn the facts about the flounder and how it um, has created something really interesting to survive in where it lives in the ecosystem. Uh, greetings to you all. Thanks for staying, sitting in on our squeaky sneakers today. Bye-bye.